Hi, uh, welcome to another edition of Ordinary Differential Equations. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to take a look at equations that are best solved with a substitution. So here I have collected a few of these problems that show up various places in your textbook. And uh, I'm going to talk about these problems. Take one example and solve it for this lecture. And, uh, I talk about the history and the origin of some other questions and then there might be other lectures later on for more examples. <coughs> so all these equations are first order. So you see there's only y prime showing up in them. There's no y double prime. The first of these things is called the homogeneous equation. These are equations where the right hand side can be written as a ratio of y to x. I'll explain that in the context of the example below. And the substitution is just to take that ratio as your new variable. <coughs> Second equation uh, that we are going to briefly mention is Bernoulli equation. Uh, y prime plus something times y is equal to something times y to the power of n. When this n is different from 1, the equation will typically not be separable. And the best thing to do is to take a substitution that is y uh, to power of 1 minus n. <clears throat> Most interesting example in this list is Brachistochrone. Uh, quite a bit of history uh, goes with that uh, problem. It has a differential equation that can be written like this and has a substitution that uh, can be written in this style. There's another one of these equations called Gomper's equation. It comes up in uh, uh, actuarial sciences. As it is, it's separable, but still best to do a substitution at the start and make the problem a lot easier. And here is kind of a generic equation that sometimes shows up in some problems. So first, uh, uh, let me say that the method of solution is going to be a little bit more involved than what we have seen before. And so there's an additional layer. And in such situation, it's good to know that all of our effort is uh, for some good cause that something is actually related to the problem that we are looking at. The first equation that I'm going to solve is just to practice certain topics that are going to show up in this course uh, over and over again. So that's a, essentially an exercise. A second one, the Bernoulli equation. Justification for that, let me just mention a few words. At the beginning of a semester, we said that uh, a way to justify this course is by paying attention to mechanics and noticing that f equal to ma is essentially a differential equation. So when you consider f equal to ma, you can think of as of acceleration as a derivative of velocity. Now there are certain forces that are dependent on velocity. Most famous of this thing is a drag force. And uh, force of drag, uh, typically, we are going to take it as proportional to velocity. You know what drag is. You know, when a car is moving, if you stick your hand out of the window, you feel a force on your hand. If the car goes faster, this force is going to be higher. So there's a rather complicated relationship between the speed and the force. But to keep it simple, we consider the force to be uh, proportional to velocity. Of course, it always opposes it, so there's always a negative uh, factor in front of this thing. So as it is, if I write uh, this force is equal to that acceleration, so if I write m dv dt is equal to minus cv, and there is no other force in my problem, well, that would be a simple example of uh, a differential equation that we already know how to solve either of our methods that we have talked about, the separation of variables or uh, integrating factor would do. But sometimes uh, you wanted to go a little bit further. For example, if we take a look at some of experiments that are related to drag, we notice that the behavior is quite complicated and it's not so reasonable to think that the force of drag is just proportional to velocity. It's much more sophisticated than that. 
and here is an example of a cylinder that's in a path of some airflow and you notice behind the cylinder there's quite a bit of uh, <coughs> complicated events going on <coughs> and here's another example so in such a complicated uh, structure we don't expect uh, something to be as simple just proportional to velocity in such so what if I want to include uh, more sophisticated uh, forces in my problem a typical uh, approach here is to add another term for example say minus some multiple say v cubed there's a good reason for putting v cubed there but uh, let me just say for example we want to add one extra term in order to get better agreement with our experiments as you notice that power of v here is very similar to the power of y we had over there and that's one reason Bernoulli equation could be studied so a uh, uh, more general drag force is going to take us to a Bernoulli equation now if our coefficients are constant this is still separable but still it is better for us to use a substitution to make the problem a lot easier here are some other places that Bernoulli equation shows up rather unexpectedly so uh, if you dig uh, here's a paper by Robert Merton a very famous economist uh, and somewhere buried in his equation in his paper there is an equation that is actually this equation 23 that is uh, an example of a Bernoulli equation and in fact we have something less exotic than that that we are going to study uh, separately later on uh, the logistic equation that shows up in the population studies we are going to have a separate section for that that's an example of uh, Bernoulli equation where the power uh, in our problem is just 2 and there and then a and b both of them are constants and then we go ahead and solve it by method of separation but again it could have been considered as an example of a Bernoulli equation and this would be another way of approaching that problem of these three pro uh, of these uh, bunch of problems here the one that's most interesting is the Brachistochrone uh, it's a question that will naturally come to your mind if uh, you pay attention to uh, equipments you play in in the park so one of the things that uh, always exists in, in a kids park is a slide so a slide is supposed to take a kid from some point A high up to some point B down here and the question is how do you shape this slide should you go straight should you go kind of a curve what kind of a curve is best well you have to define what you mean by best and I suppose you agree with me that the best thing to do is to design a shape that takes a kid from this point to this point in the shortest amount of time so that is exactly the meaning of brachistochrone that's a shortest time curve so one of the earliest uh, studies of this thing was by Galileo and he uh, came to the conclusion that this best be in shape of a circle well that's a good approximation but turns out not to be correct the problem turns out to be quite a bit more complicated than that and it took quite a few years after Galileo until the problem uh, was posed and then also uh, solved so let's take a look at uh, animation of this problem so this is a nice paper in Mathematical Association of America I hope you go pick it up and uh, read through it so here's our point A and here's our point B and we are trying to make a slide the slide could be a straight line, a parabola, a circle that's what Galileo thought our holy grail is this black line here and this is some other curve so when you click on this uh, several balls start to slide so only sliding without friction allowed here to keep the problem simple and the question is which of these is going to get to B fastest so let's see there goes the balls and if they were horses we see the black horse is first he gets to be first and uh, that shape is the shape of cycloid 
we see cycloids other places in calculus and here is an amazing property of that it shows up quite a few places where time is an issue <clears throat> so let me go explain what the cycloid is if you haven't seen it before uh, you immediately appreciate what it is uh, but the problem also has quite a bit of history mathematics it was officially posed by Johann Bernoulli uh, a famous Swiss mathematician he posed it as a challenge to mathematicians of his time that was a standard practice in those days uh, 17th century uh, for mathematicians to challenge each other uh, many people took up uh, the problem including his brother his older brother was also a mathematician and in fact in their family there are quite a few mathematicians here uh, and the, the family rivalry between these two brothers actually is a, a historical uh, topic of interest itself and also uh, Sir Isaac Newton got into this uh, competition as well anonymously solved the problem right away uh, but uh, he's British and Bernoulli is uh, a Swiss and Bernoulli was on the side of uh, Leibniz who had a um, role with uh, Newton over the issue of who created calculus first he, so there's quite a bit of history there but let's go and take a look at uh, what uh, a cycloid is so imagine you have a coin and here's a ruler and you're going to take this coin and uh, it's going to roll on the slide without uh, uh, roll on the ruler without sliding uh, it's a little bit hard to arrange that so if you take a bicycle wheel that has quite a bit of friction and hold it to a wall or a ceiling or something and uh, move it forward it is and if you keep in your mind a particular point of this tire or coin that point is going to travel on a cycloid let me show you how so if I move the circle without uh, skipping or sliding so it's just r perfectly rolling on that line as I go through this motion that particular point is going to uh, draw a cycloid so what we are claiming is that if you want to go from this point to some other point of this cycloid the cycloid itself is going to be the shortest path if you draw for example a straight line it's going to take longer if you draw a circle between these two points it's going to be longer if it's a parabola it's going to be longer and so on so different curves are going to take different times and this is the best you can do so that's a, a very interesting problem uh, altogether it makes a perfect uh, uh, paper for, for students who want to go toward mathematics or theoretical engineering or just if you are interested in this topic and you want to write a paper that would be a very good uh, thing, uh, issue to consider okay uh, Gompers equation we might come or you know, see that in some of our homework problem later on and as I mentioned this is just a generic uh, case let's go ahead and take this particular problem so I have uh, y prime is equal to that particular expression and the question is to solve it and uh, uh, first we want to show that it's actually a homogeneous equation what does it mean it's homogeneous if you say right hand side has to be a function of y over x so what I have done here is that I factored x squared out of this expression of course it doesn't have a factor of x so we are forcing a factorization so we uh, take the factor out and divide each term by x squared then x squares cancel out and then uh, we simplify these fractions we see that the x squared over x squared is 1 this one just y over x this one is y over x squared and similarly in the denominator now you see what it means to say the right hand side is a function of y over x each appearances of these uh, letters is in this fraction so that by itself suggests that if I take that as my 
new variable, my equation might get to be simpler. So I take my w to be y over x. So each of these things is going to be replaced by w. And the question is, how about replacing y prime? I take this equation, cross multiply. So x times w is y. I take a derivative of it. So derivative of the first is 1 times w is this. In the first times the derivative of second is that. We don't know what w is, so we just write a w. Next, we go ahead and substitute both sides. So I go ahead, instead of y prime, I write what I obtained here. And the right hand side, instead of y over x, I just write w. Next, what we are going to do is to take the w to the other side and do the subtraction. Let me make sure that you're coming along. Uh, I ask you to go ahead and uh, re restart this problem and do it by yourself and then uh, separate w and x and then try to solve the problem by yourself. Let's see how far you can go. So again, this is one of the points in the lecture. You want to do the problem yourself and then come back and compare your answer versus what I have. Let's see how far you go. Okay, so pause and then come back. So here we subtracted W. That I took this W to the other side. I have to take a common denominator, take W multiplied by this denominator and subtract it. It looks very messy, but it's going to clean up. So here I multiply by w, that's what I got. Now I'm going to collect similar terms. For example, 2w and w, minus w squared and 2w squared. When we simplify that, we get an expression that looks like this. So x times w dw dx is equal to this expression. <coughs> well, this is uh, obviously a separable equation. So I take my x to one side and w to the other side by cross multiplying. So this becomes dx over x. Uh, essentially, it turns out to be a cross multiplication, even though the idea is different. And also w squared and uh, whatever else, this uh, expression goes to the left hand side. So uh, that at that stage, our equation is separated. So what we do from here on is going to be a topic that you have seen in calculus. And uh, so this problem is going to act as a reminder or a review. And we are going to come across this issue many, many times. So now I have to integrate both sides. OK, so I have to integrate. Well, right hand side, uh, that's the easy one. So let's just uh, logarithm of x. Left hand side is a topic from uh, calculus. How do you do that? Uh, uh, how do you do that, that uh, integration? Well, maybe that's uh, another place to pause and then uh, you try to compare what you had with what is here and if in case uh, uh, you had some algebra errors and such, try to redo your problem, catch up with me. And next, you let me know how do we do that integration. OK, think about it. Perhaps do, do, do a little bit of search. Uh, go back to your calculus book, the section on methods of integration. See what is it that we do here. And try to wrestle with it yourself. OK. Let's go back to the problem. Well, these type of uh, integrals are referred to as rational function integration. Uh, the buzzword here is integration uh, by partial fraction decomposition. So we have to take the expression on the left hand side, break it up into small pieces, and hope that those small pieces will be easy for us to integrate. In this case, it would be. So again, you are strongly recommended to try to do this problem yourself. First, to do partial fraction decomposition, we need to factor the denominator. So 
this is cubic but it's easy if you break it up so that's 1 plus w and then w squared times 1 plus w and this is one of this and w squared of the same so if you factor 1 plus w the other factor will be 1 plus w squared so that was easy next the question is how to break up the whole fraction so I have this over uh, no, 1 plus w times 1 plus w squared okay so now uh, I hope you did pick up your calculus book partial fraction decomposition We are going to abbreviate that the PFD is one of the basic tools that we are going to utilize often. So how did that go? We make, uh, well there's a long story there. In our case is rather uh, limited choices for us anyway. This is going to be broken into smaller fractions. The only two denominators could be there are these two. And you remember that numerator of a linear expression is just a number and the numerator of um, quadratic expression is a linear expression so that's the general principle there then we have to go figure out what a b c happen to be and then uh, once we have them we can integrate this and once we have that we have the left hand side and right hand side of course easy and we have our first round of integration and then we go back and substitute for W and hopefully we get our answer in some clean cut manner over there. So how do we get ABC? Several ways. Here is the most uh, fundamental way of doing this thing. There are some shortcuts that your professor might have told you about. You may feel free to go ahead and use them. So essentially a cross multiplication. A times denominator of the second fraction and then b w plus c times the denominator of the first fraction so we are searching for an identity such that this expression is equal to that other numerator so i want 1 minus 2 w plus w uh, excuse me, minus w squared to be equal to this let me multiply it out so it's a plus a w squared and then uh, I have BW and BW squared and C plus CW. If we go collect similar terms, so of course A here and C here are constant terms, so they collect together. And then BW and CW are linear terms, so they collect together, B plus C times W, and then the last two also collect together so uh, a plus b w squared now we are solving for these coefficients so that we'll have an identity that is for all w's this has to be true that only happens when corresponding uh, coefficients are the same that is a plus c has to be one b plus c has to be minus 2 and a plus b has to be minus 1 so what you want to do is again uh, pause make sure you, your solution is uh, verifying what we have so far and hopefully continue uh, get a b c get your fractions get there integral by yourself and I'll continue so uh, one thing you can do uh, for example take the first and the third equation and uh, or the take the first and second uh, you have many choices not a difficult problem here if I subtract these two I get a minus b is equal to 3 and I take the last equation which was a plus b is equal to minus 1 if I add these two equations I get 2a is equal to 2 
So my A has to be 1. I take A and put it uh, in either of these equations. So if A is 1, B becomes minus 2. And uh, if B is minus 2, I'll come back and look at this equation. Turns out my C has to be 0. So one way or another, we get these uh, three numbers. So I have my A, B, C. Uh, this is 1. This is minus 2. And this is 0. So what we have so far is 1 minus 2w minus w squared over 1 plus w times 1 plus w squared is equal to a turned out to be 1, b turned out to be minus 2, So, if you are integrating these expressions, it's all dw everywhere, so let me write dw, dw, dw. Well, now we have it easy because first one is just logarithm of <coughs> 1 plus w, and the second one is, uh, again, you want to pause, make sure you are up to speed with respect to that. Numerator is derivative of denominator, so that's logarithm of 1 plus w squared. Of course, I don't need absolute value here. It's a positive quantity. Okay. And the right-hand side is, of course, logarithm of x. So I have uh, logarithm of x. That one also in the absolute value. And now I need my constant. Okay, we have uh, uh, almost there. You have almost arrived. Let's go ahead, clean this up. Left hand side, I can write it as a logarithm of a ratio. So remember from pre calculus, difference of logarithms is a logarithm of a ratio. And that is equal to, let's write C first, so less chance of misreading it. Next, I go ahead and exponentiate both sides. So, uh, exponentiating both sides, I get 1 plus w over 1 plus w squared. Here I get exponential of c plus logarithm of x. A place that many students make a mistake here. This has to be written as the product, not as a sum to e logarithm of x. Uh, so e to the, this was of course absolute value, e to the c, is exponential of logarithm of x, is just absolute value of x. So by now I have this expression is equal to uh, that expression on the right hand side. This one was also on the absolute value, I forget. So absolute values can be uh, removed at the price of putting a plus or minus. So I have 1 plus w over 1 plus w squared is equal to either plus or minus exponential of c times x. So the absolute values can be taken off picture at the cost of putting a plus or minus. Now to reduce the clutter I can take all of this and give it one name Let's call it K. So I have 1 plus W over 1 plus W squared is equal to some multiple of X. That multiple K could be positive or negative. That's also something that we are going to see in the future quite often. Now we want a relationship between X and Y. So we go back to what W was. W was Y over X. I put it back. To get the form of equation I want, 1 plus y over x over 1 plus y over x squared is equal to kx. So I can take common denominator or whatever you like to clean this up. So here I get x squared plus y squared over x squared is equal to k x 
So this x squared, that x, and that x uh, cancel each other out. Okay, when we multiply this with the reciprocal of that, x squared and x cancel an x, and x remains, and the x from two sides are going to be canceled out. Make sure you verify that for yourself. It becomes x plus y over x squared plus y squared is equal to k. One more step, x plus y became k times x squared plus y squared. That's the final answer of this problem. Now let me see from your knowledge of pre-calculus, what kind of a shape is that? For example, replace k by some number if that is bothering you and figure out what that shape is. So final pause and the uh, solution by you guys is what kind of a shape are we uh, talking about in that equation? Okay, uh, try to figure that out. Okay, convince yourself. that this is equation of a circle whose center is on the 45 degree line is somewhere here big or small its center is just on that line so okay so we went through a rather lengthy problem again it the problem had many components that are going to show up later on in a variety of other problems. Uh, most important of this thing was substitution, then partial fraction decomposition, and then integration, and then handling absolute values, handling constants, and then finally cleaning it up and uh, recognizing what shape is it that we are dealing with. So <coughs> if the lecture had uh, a little bit too many components for you. Make sure you follow the other ones. Uh, put this thing as a second reading. Uh, and however, if you want to go further on in this course, it's important to uh, become comfortable with the steps of this problem. Okay, good luck and God bless until the next lecture.